Hey guys, we are going to learn how to diagram adjectives today. If you have been with me in diagramming sentences all along the way, you know that we diagram on purpose and for a purpose, and that is to really understand what sentences are saying. So some of the sentences that are diagrammed on the slide are going to be ones that are used previously, and then there are gonna be some new sentences as well. Um, and some examples have prepositional phrases in them and other things that we won't diagram within this video, but we will in the future. So specifically for this video, we are going to review all the past skills. So simple subjects, simple predicates, direct objects. And now in this video, we're going to go into the sentences and add in how to diagram adjectives. At this point, you probably already know that an adjective is a word that describes. Specifically, adjectives must describe nouns. I call adjectives, or like I think of them as cats. Like cats are very specific animals. They only like certain types of people. So your adjective is, that type of word is like a cat. It only describes nouns. We'll get to a part of speech in the next lesson that's like dogs because it wants to describe everything it loves everyone but your adjectives they only describe nouns so if the word that's being described is not a noun then the word being used is not an adjective okay so we'll get into it now um how we diagram using adjectives oh oh there we go Okay, so this was a sentence that you got, we have already worked on together. The little boy ate cheesy pizza, and together we thought about the simple subject, the one word who or what, and that simple subject is boy. What one word did the boy do? He ate. To figure out direct objects, you ask yourself verbed what, and in this sentence the verb is ate, so ate what? And the answer is pizza. So we have a direct object in the sentence and the direct object is pizza. So if we diagram simple subject, boy ate pizza. A strategy I think I've said before is to check off words that you are done with. So we've diagrammed boy, we've diagrammed ate, and we've diagrammed pizza. And we have all of these words left over, right? Like what do we do with the rest? Well, these words, um, two of them are describing adjectives, and one is a very specific type of adjective called an article adjective, okay? So let's do the easy ones first. Let's go with the word pizza, okay? Pizza is a noun, okay? Um, it's something that you can eat, it's a thing. Um, and when you look at the word cheesy, that is a describing word. Well, what is that word describing? describing pizza like what type of pizza it is a cheesy pizza so when you diagram adjectives any describing word when it is diagrammed it goes underneath the word that it is describing it goes underneath the word that is being described okay so what word is cheesy describing well it's describing pizza right what type of pizza is cheesy pizza so the word cheesy is going to go underneath pizza and you just draw a slanted line, and then on the line you write the word. So the word is cheesy. What type of pizza? Cheesy. So that one is done. Um, cheesy is an adjective. What is it describing? It's describing pizza, and that is why it gets diagrammed underneath pizza. All right, let's go back to the beginning. If we look at boy, what words are describing boy? What type of boy is it? Well, he's a little boy. Little is describing boy. So little goes underneath boy. Why does little go underneath boy? Because little is describing boy. That leaves us with the word the. Now the, it's, there's three article adjectives. The, a, and an. And the is an article adjective. It doesn't describe like cheesy or like little, but it is still considered an adjective. And the rule for diagramming article adjectives is that they go underneath the noun they are in front of. So V is in front of boy. That boy is the closest noun 
closes down to V that is in front of. So we will diagram V under boy. So now the whole sentence has been diagrammed. What kind of boy? V boy. This is actually a definite article is V boy. Um, we also have in A and N are indefinite articles. So which boy? V boy. What kind of boy? A little boy. What kind of pizza? A cheesy pizza. Adjectives, any really describing words, which are your adjectives, adverbs, and prepositional phrases, they get diagrammed underneath. The word they are describing. So you really have to think about what word is being described. All right, let's go on to the next one. We diagram this one before. Um, simple subject, we. Simple predicate is will bake because will is a helping verb, right? And helping verbs, they get diagrammed and then you have a slash like this and then the other verb. I remember the slanted slash because it kind of makes a V. It can make like a V shape, so it's a slash. And then bake what? Can you answer that question? You can. So the direct object is pie. So go ahead and um, check off the words we've already diagrammed. We will bake pie. Now we have three words left. A is an article adjective, A, N, and V. So the noun that it is in front of, okay, let's look, which one? It's pie, right? So A, A pie, it's an indefinite, indefinite article. Warm, what one word is warm describing? It's not describing we. It's not describing will or bake. It's not an adverb. I, it is, you want your pie to be warm, right? Warm, unless I guess it's like peanut butter or cheesecake, lots of cake. Warm, okay, and then cherry describes what kind of pie? I buy a cherry pie. So all three words get diagrammed underneath pie. Why do they get diagrammed under pie? Because each one of these words is describing pie. Describing words get diagrammed underneath the word they are describing. So you really got to think what word is being described by your adjective. Okay, let's go on to another one. She ran five laps around the park. I'm going to go ahead and give away the fact that around the park, we aren't going to um, diagram today because it is a prepositional phrase. So we will, there'll be a video in the future that you'll be able, you'll learn how to diagram those. So we won't diagram that today. We have already diagrammed simple subject. So your simple subject, she, what did she do? She ran, ran what? Laps. So she ran laps. You have one word left. Think to yourself, where, what word, the word that is left, what word is it describing? Describing how many laps. It's not describing she. It's not describing how she ran. It's describing how many laps. So how many laps she ran five. It's an adjective describing how many laps were run. Five laps. Okay. Next one. We love stylish Miss Shogren. She is stylish. Simple subject from previous videos. We. Simple predicate. What are we doing? We love. Love what? Shogren, Mrs. Shogren. Oh, why? Do you remember why we diagrammed both Mrs. and Shogren? Say it if you know it. I feel like I'm like one of those instructional videos. I guess I am. It's because it's a proper noun. When you have a proper noun, you keep that proper noun together. It's one name. It's the name of a noun. Name of a noun is proper noun. So we keep those together. And we only have stylish left. Hmm. What word is stylish describing? Well, we are, I'm sure, we are stylish, right? But that's not the word being described. It's not like stylish we, right? It's opposite. So, stylish goes under the word being described. We'll write in stylish. And check that off. Okay. And the next one, he needed some rest. We've got a lot of words already diagrammed from a previous video. Simple subject was he. Needed is a past tense verb, and what did he need? He needed rest. Now we have some left. What is some describing? What one word? 
Sam is describing rest. How much rest will it be Sam? There we go. Some rest. This is a new sentence. All right, so read it all. The gray squirrel ate crunchy brown acorns. There's a lot out at our recess field that do that. So you think to yourself, what is the one word, the simple subject that the sentence is about? And we're trying to get out of the way. We've got one word to pick from. Has to be a noun. What is the sentence about? And if you, in your head, said or thought or said out loud squirrel, you're right. The one word that this sentence is about is the squirrel. Now, ask yourself, what is the one thing, like the action the squirrel is doing? It's always going to be your first verb in your sentence. What is the squirrel doing? He ate. Probably a fat squirrel. The gray fat squirrel ate. Especially at our recess area. They have a ton of acorns. Okay, ate. Squirrel ate. And now we've got a verb, so you got to ask yourself, verb what, just to check if you have a direct object. Not every sentence is going to have a direct object. But ate what? The answer is acorns. So I'm going to draw in a direct object line. It's perpendicular, math term, a perpendicular line, but it doesn't break the other line because the only line that breaks the other lines is the line that breaks your subject and predicate. So it's super important. You do not break this line again. If you do, just use your eraser. All right, now we have so many words left. We've got the gray, crunchy, and brown. So let's just start left to right. The. If you're already thinking like it's an article adjective, it goes under the closest noun. You got it. So the goes under squirrel. The squirrel. Well, gray is describing what word. It's going to either, it has to describe a word on this line. So is gray describing squirrel? Eight or acorns? It's describing the squirrel. So we've got gray. Now we're at crunchy. Is crunchy describing squirrel? Eight or acorns? It's describing acorns. What type of acorns? They are crunchy. And then what type of acorns are they? They are crunchy and they're also brown. So brown, crunchy, crunchy brown acorns. I think we have one more that's brand new. The fluffy blue jacket is warm. Think to yourself, what is the one word the sentence is about? Or another strategy is to go backwards and start with your verb. If you really struggle in finding that simple subject, walk along your sentence in your mind and find your first verb. Now for this sentence, if you have not memorized your memorized box of verbs, it's going to be a struggle because this sentence doesn't have an action verb. It has a memorized verb. And if you're thinking or saying the word is, is your verb, you're correct. Okay. All right. Well, what is? Give me the noun. One word noun. What is? Jacket. And this is just another way to do the same, to, to get your simple subject and simple predicate. If you have a, if you struggle to find the simple subject, we'll start backwards, start with your verb and then ask yourself what is, what ran, what jumped, and then fill out your noun. All right, so we've got jacket is, well ask yourself is what is warm. This gets tricky, right? You could be thinking, well warm is describing the jacket. If you ask yourself verb what and you can answer it, always prioritize it as a direct object and I know that can be tricky but that's why I wanted to show you that was in this video you can answer the is question here is what well, it is warm so we we use it here we place it here is warm um, okay now we have words left so we've got the fluffy and blue and if you're like you've already got this going really well you have already figured out that all of these words are describing the jacket We've got an article adjective, V, fluffy is what type of jacket, and then blue is the color. Okay. Let's see. Oops. So I think this 
actually our last one. Let me double check them. Oh, I was wrong. Um, the tiny gymnast flipped on the mat. Now, on is a preposition, so I'm going to go ahead and circle this prepositional phrase. Ooh, uh oh, I'm so sorry. Huh. We're that serious now. Um, on the mat, we aren't going to diagram. We aren't going to diagram today, but we'll diagram it in a future video because it's a prepositional phrase. And you will learn how to do that, to do that and diagram it, and you're going to be really good at it. You're just not going to do it yet. Okay? So let's focus on the words we need a diagram. We've got the tiny gymnast flipped. If you want to go backwards and start with your verb, like the last sentence we diagrammed, walk along your sentence and find the first verb, a word that you can do, or a memorized word. That word is flipped. You can, well, you might not be able to flip. I cannot flip. I can flop, but some people can flip. Gymnasts can flip. So flipped is a verb. There's a whole gym for it. Flip gym. All right, now ask yourself what flipped, right? What one word flipped? Gymnast. Gymnast flipped. All right. And we have words left the and tiny. The is an article adjective, and tiny describes your gymnast. And now the entire sentence is diagrammed. So check off. It's a good strategy. It, it may not seem like you need to check off your words yet, but as we get into more in-depth, challenging sentences, it's going to be a very helpful strategy to use. At least it is for me. I think this is now the end. Let me double check. Yep. So hopefully this would, has helped you diagram adjectives. Adjectives only describe nouns. And so they have to be diagrammed underneath the word they are describing. I hope you have a great day.